Good evening, everybody. Megan here coming to you from my car in Washington, D.C. Um, I'm actually just outside of Catwood's apartment. We're teaching a class tonight on goal setting for creatives, hence why I look so beautiful and I've got these cool earrings. Marvelous. So anyways, I'm in my car getting this shit done because I am a hashtag entrepreneur and this is how we roll, making it happen. I told you I'd be here at 6 p.m. every evening and here I am. So hooray hurrah for following through on our commitments and being in integrity, which is what we talked about last night. Um, and tonight I've got some really cool stuff to share with you around uh, my personal romantic relationship. And this is stuff that I actually haven't shared before. So I'm excited to share it with you um, in service of you and your life and your business. So um, the title of this broadcast is called How a Breakthrough in My Relationship, My Romantic Relationship Created a Breakthrough in My Business. And you might be wondering, like, what in the world does her relationship have to do with her business? And the answer is a lot. Um, you know, as a coach, I really believe that how we show up in one place is how we show up in every place. And I see that to be true all the time with my clients, um, you know, with myself, with every member of my coaching team and accomplishment coaching. It's true. It's just one of those things. And where every area of our life is the canary in the coal mine for other areas. So it's really an important concept that I use with all my clients and I use it on myself that how we show up in one area of our lives is how we show up in other areas too. So, um, I want to kick off with the breakthrough, which is kind of a spoiler, spoiler alert, but here's what I figured out through my relationship that I was actually afraid of greatness. I was afraid of greatness. And when I was dating, I was really looking for this great relationship. In fact, I had, um, whole list of things I wanted. And I think this is true for a lot of people. We're all in it for greatness, but in reality, being great can actually be tr pretty terrifying. Hey Katie, welcome. Um, being great can actually be pretty terrifying. It's something that a lot of people sabotage. They get it or they're about to get it and they self-sabotage. They get in their own way and get in the way of their greatness because ultimately us being great can be really confronting. So Again, back when I was dating, I even created this list of stuff that I wanted in my ideal partner. And I'm going to share it with you because I really love my list. So here are the things I was looking for that I said would have it be a great relationship. And the first one was joy, evident through his awesome smile. That was number one. Number two, demonstrates ambition about family, work, and improving himself. Um, and is fully responsible for his life. Number three, healthy and vibrant relationships with a community of friends and family. Number four, extremely loving and has similar love languages. Five, consistent and loyal. Six, intelligent and worldly. Seven, loves to explore. Eight, kind, gentle, compassionate, and spiritually aware. Nine, makes me laugh. Ten, health conscious and active, loves the outdoors. Eleven, we have fun dancing together. Twelve, loves me unconditionally. 13, has a healthy relationship with money, and three more, believes in my work, wants to be in a committed partnership, and I'm very attracted to him, I lied, there's one more, um, challenges me to be better and stronger, and appreciates that I challenge him to be better and stronger. And then guess what? I found that person. So I'd love to say that it was happily ever after, after that, that like I found him and it was great, and in some ways it was, and in other ways it freaked the hell out of me. Because here I was, like a cat with a bird. Like the cat really wants the bird, it stalks the bird, and then when it finally has it, the cat kind of panics. It's like, oh, I got the bird, what do I do with it? That's house cats versus, you know, like lions, they're fine. Um, so there were three issues that I found with being with greatness. And I want you guys to give me likes, to give me hearts, if this resonates for you, if you've noticed this in your own life or in your business. And the first one was, initially it didn't look exactly like I thought it would, so I questioned it. So he's not a dancer, he's not a coach, he like didn't grow up abroad for some reason I like thought that maybe my future significant other would. And because it didn't look exactly like I thought it might, even though he hit all the criteria, I really questioned it for a while. And you know, that's how it goes with business too, is sometimes we're like, I want 10 clients. 
and then maybe we get 10 clients, but because maybe like they're not the clients that we thought they'd be, or maybe we thought they'd all be women and half of them are men, we question it or we forget to be grateful for it. And we all know that gratitude is a really key part of business. Um, or maybe we even pout or feel like a failure, even though we technically got the thing that we asked for, <laughs> which is so ironic, but it's something that we do that sabotages our greatness and undermines us really um, being high vibe and allowing us to receive the things that we want to receive. So the issue number two was I kept waiting for the ball to drop. I kept waiting for something to go wrong because it was too good. And when we're waiting for the thing to go wrong, when we're looking for the problem, oftentimes we either find it because we're looking for it, or we end up creating it and attracting it to us. So, you know, the ball never dropped. It never dropped with him. And over time, I got more and more nervous that maybe it would. And so, um, you know, the effect of that was that it affected my experience. Like I wasn't able to be as fully present to receive what he was giving me as fully. And to his great credit, the, like the more he's just so open to giving and receiving. So he was able to give, give, give. And as I've opened up and, and started to trust it, I'm able to receive even more and to really be with that love in a new way. Um, and it's the same with our business too. So if we find some success and we're like, oh, this was a one-off, I didn't really do that thing, or I got lucky. If we relate to it that way, we'll gather evidence that it is that way. Because we can build a case for whatever we choose to build a case for. If we relate to it as evidence that like, we're on our way, that what we're doing is working, that we're committed to reaching this final goal and getting it, and this is evidence for that thing, it's a much more positive vibe that we're sending out to ourselves and the world that attracts more of that good stuff to us. Um, and then the final issue was, um, I wasn't letting myself trust the process. So when it comes to greatness, I often find that there's ups and there's downs, like with anything in life. And again, like wherever we're looking, like we can see the down as evidence that it's not working, or we can just see it as part of, Ooh, I paused there for a second. We can just see it as part of trusting our process. Um, and so as I learned to surrender, as I learned to let go, I was able to be with the ups and downs in a way that didn't feel quite so stressful. So, um, it's something that I've learned to practice in my relationship. And it's also something that I've learned to practice in my business. It's like on the downs, like it's okay because ultimately we're heading up versus believing that because I'm in a down, the business is heading down. Like it's a great way to slip into panic, anxiety, all of those other things. And it's the same with the relationships. We're up and we're down. And if we have a day where maybe I feel a little less connected, like it's just part of that flow. So tr surrendering and trusting the process um, is another aspect of that. So I hope that this has been helpful for you guys in thinking about life, love, your business, your projects. If it has been, comment below. Tell me what you're taking away from it. Hearts and likes and all of that too. Please go ahead and put it here. And remember, we're doing this each evening, 6 p.m. So, you know, tune back in. See you guys later.